What's up guys? Welcome back to our final videos on with this PWM stuff where we're looking at how to create the music one that we created with the Arduino. In fact, I'll just pull that up. Um, this one's gonna be a little different because I didn't include a switch uh, with it. So um, uh, it's just gonna, just gonna, once you power it up, it's just gonna play the melody. But here's our Arduino one. If you remember it, you know, we've got basically, and they have this, uh, this tone function, where's that at? There it is. The tone function, where you basically designate what pin it goes out, you designate uh, the melody that it plays, and the duration of the notes. So I did something similar, except we wrote our own tone function. And the cool thing about this is with the microcontroller, like the one that I chose, or you guys could choose whichever one you want, but that 1938 chip um, has multiple pins that you can assign different uh, timers to, and you can basically make three, I believe, yeah, you can make like three different uh, PWM waves. So the difference is, um, and I don't know, you might be able to do that with this, choosing different pins, I don't know, I haven't tried it, but you'll be able to, you could create like a bass part, you could create the treble part, you could create, you know, uh, you could even maybe do like maybe a drum part, like just use a, a certain frequency and just, you know, pulse it and make like a drum part. You basically can make different parts with it. So that's essentially what uh, we're doing here. Um, is we've uh, is I've gone ahead and written the software for this and you guys could take this and make it um, whatever, you know, whatever for you. So let's see here. Let's gonna get started. So anyway, so to get started, let's get uh, get into this here. We've got our uh, uh, basically our stuff set up. I'm gonna skip the tone function for right now and go down to the main uh, function. Uh, technically, let's see. I closed that, didn't I? Well, I may pull that Arduino thing back up. It's basically exactly the same, uh, more or less, as the Arduino. Um, we're setting our tri-state C register all just to output because I'm just outputting everything. Then we're setting our melody, so just like we did before, I'm setting our melody in, in an array, setting the size of our uh, array, and then we're also um, declaring some container variables, the duration and the pause between notes, so we can uh, calculate that those two. Uh, and then we're also uh, putting in our note durations, so you got that going on as well. Um, and that's like that software that I posted. I don't know those of you that don't know, you go to Project Code Link and check it out. There's a uh, pick music or a music software of some sort that I wrote that will help uh, build these arrays. It'll actually build the Arduino code if you uh, click generate code. But if you if you wanna use this, um, since it outputs and builds that code basically in front of you in text boxes, you can just cut and paste um, your arrays and stuff in and it makes it a lot easier to make build the music uh, with it if you do that. So anyway, so that's basically that. We're gonna go down, here's our four that basically rolls through each note. It's gonna roll through our arrays and uh, play each piece. So essentially it's gonna come in here, it's gonna calculate the note duration. So whether it's a 16th note, eighth note, quarter note, half note, whole note, whatever, it's gonna calculate uh, based on a millisecond range. Uh, so it's basically a thousand milliseconds is a second. And then of course we divide it up whether it's you know by 16 or four or whatever note it is. So that's what we're dividing there. Then we got um, this uh, tone uh, that we're calling, which is our function up there. And how mine's set up is the one that I built, we're just passing the melody and the duration to it. You don't have to pass the pin uh, number to it just because I set it up on, I think, pin C2. Yeah, C2. Um, I'll show you what I looked at here in just a second. Um, we'll go back up and we'll go through the tone function, but I'm just going through the main function right now. Um, then we're also creating our pause between uh, durations. I just chose 10% more than whatever the duration of the note is. So if it's a 16th note, I did a little bit longer than that. If quarter note, a little bit longer than that. You know, it's 10% more. It's what I did. And then I've created just a simple delay function that delays one millisecond and it delays um, the for those counts. How many counts that is. And then I just threw in just an infinite for loop, just some place for everything to go. So anyway... That's basically it um, for the main function. We're gonna go up here to our 
tone function. Okay, so the tone function, now this is very important. Since we're dealing with some very big pitches, like if we look at our pitch.h, we got, you know, 4978, or even up here in the 330s or whatever, you're gonna be also multiplying these numbers by 16 for the scale, uh, to scale the timer with, and things like that. So these numbers get really, really big. So you wanna make sure you have a 32-bit integer declared otherwise you're gonna it's gonna basically truncate off a lot of your stuff so that's where I'm declaring the long if you look in the like for high tech C and I think even the XC8 compiler or you know XC16 but anyway any compiler should have um, a uh, basically a variable a data type reference that'll tell you what the different data types are for that compiler and tell you what is allowed so like this one you can go up to 32 bits so um, and 32 bit is a long is what they is what they declare that as and you can declare signed and unsigned and you know so on and so forth but basically it's a long okay so we're declaring pitch is a long length is not going to get too awfully big I mean a normal just int declaring just normal int is I think 16 bits so you've got you know 32 768 is how huge the number can get and so I think that's pretty good. I don't think you'll be going uh, a length of 32,768 you know, milliseconds. I don't think you'll be doing that. But if you do and you need more, you can always declare that one as long too. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and declare my counter variable i. And then what I did was I actually had to split up the pitches just because the way since we're only using an 8-bit timer in this guy, I, I don't know what the timers are in the... Uh, Atmel processor that's in the uh, Arduino, so they might actually have a higher bit timer to where they just pick one scale and they go. But mine, since it's only 8-bit, you have to choose, you kind of have to change up scales halfway through. And I'll post this too. I made this little Excel spreadsheet, and basically this black line is the dividing point. What I did, and I, I, you've probably seen this in the past uh, videos, you know, I showed, I kind of gave you a prequel showing you what this looked like. But basically what it does is it takes, I was actually going to go in here and fill in uh, the notes, type in this as note, you know, whatever, note, whatever, note, whatever. So I'll make this look all pretty, but this is basically the rough outline of it. Right now this is at a prescale of 16 with our internal clock declared at, at 1 megahertz, which up here you see that declared at one megahertz is what I'm setting the internal oscillator. See, I'm setting our configuration to use the internal oscillator. Um, and we're setting that up to be um, one megahertz. So we got one megahertz, 16 is our prescale. And then here's all of our frequencies, just like our pitches. If you looked at that, it starts at 31, just like our pitches.h uh, starts at 31. So just like that. And then what this does is if you look up here, here's the formula for calculating the the pitch. Remember, it's our FOSC divided by four times our scale times the frequency that we want, which would be 31. And then that whole thing subtracted one from it. And then that whole piece, you divide two from it. And then what I'm doing is I'm using the round up function and saying zero integer. So it'll just round up to the nearest whole number. And then that's how I'm calculating, whoops, how I'm calculating this number over here. <coughs> Excuse me. And then this number over here, <coughs> then is the is the uh, number that we'll set the um, period register with. So anyway, so that's what I did. Well, anyway, once you get a notice just in testing, once you get up to 14 or get up to this 554 frequency, you start to accumulate quite a bit of error. So if I change, and it looks like about here is probably the best place, if I change scales from 16 to one, then I'll recover my error. My error won't be so large. So essentially from 587 up to the 4978, it is now calculating based off of CA55, which is right here. It's basically calculating uh, that new scale in. So instead of it being 16 like it was up here, it's now one down here because I have to rescale the timer to get the resolution to work. So, and so you'll see that, the reason I'm showing that to you, and like I said, I'll post this so you guys can see how it's calculated and play with it. But that's what I have this if in here for, okay? This if and this else if. So that's what I'm saying. If from f basically pitch is from 14 to 554. So go back. So from 14 to 554, which, oh yeah, I, I, was, I was doing it. It really should be 31. 
but yeah, that's close enough. From 31 to 554, or like I have 14 to 554, I think I was testing some stuff is the reason that I, I redid that, but you can change that to 31 if you wanted to make it exactly for this pitches thing. But anyway, basically something small to 554, it's gonna be basically a scale of 16. You can see that we're scaling to 16 here, okay? Um, and we'll go through the calculations, I'll show you that. But then down here from 554 um, on up, we're basically on up to the 4978, so five from, so from greater than 554, which I need to make that greater than, sorry, sorry about that, greater than 554, needs to go on, why don't we go ahead and correct that other thing while we're at it. I'm gonna have to recompile this anyway, so 31. And it looks like my colors are off. Good grief, can't even see that. Oh well, fix that in a minute. Anyway, so from 554 to 4978, 4978 is the, the other scale, which is the scale of one. Now getting into that, <clears throat> if we go into our first one, just like we did, um, I'm gonna kind of brush through this because we dis I described all this in gross detail in the PWM one. So if you haven't seen the PWM videos uh, for Pick, pay, pick Basics, um, go back and watch those and I'll uh, describe to you in depth what this is. All right, what I'm doing is I'm basically for our PR2, I'm you know doing our normal calculation. I'm setting that as a long, just in case. I'm typecasting it as a long, just in case anything gets all wacky or whatever. And basically we're scaling this one to 16. We're also coming down here, uh, let's see, in the timer and scaling it using the six, we'll scale it to a 16, as you can see. I put in the comments here, we'll scale it to a 16, okay? So then, and then of course we set up pin C2 as output. We calculate the period, which we just divide the, or cal calculate the pulse width, sorry. We just divide the period by two. That's the easiest way to do that. That way we get like a 50% duty cycle. And then we're then delaying the amount of time. Here's where the delay comes in for the amount of time that you've set in uh, the, dur or in the length. Basically in the length of the, basically so if it's 16th note or eighth note or quarter note or whatever, you're, you, that's what you pass to this length variable and then that delays in milliseconds whatever you've, uh, you've put in, in milliseconds, okay? So that's, that's, that's the key. So it has to be in milliseconds and that's why we calculate that. Uh, yeah, this note duration. We take that and we calculate that to pass to the function. So that way it's in milliseconds and not in uh, seconds or just in like a 16th or something like that. So anyway, so that passes in there, that sets that all up. And then we also have to make sure and turn off the timer when it's done because if we don't turn off the timer, the PWM will just keep going. So you'll just have a, a solid tone. You'll just have beep and it'll just be solid, you know? So you want it to be like beep, 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 beep. You want it to be, you know, where it's on and off and on and off. So this is how you turn it off. Basically what I'm doing, since it's F uh, B is I'm passing, oh, let's see, I can go ahead and, let me see if I can't pull up the data sheet. I'll just go ahead and show you, why not? Let me see if I can find the data sheet here real quick for this pick micro. All right, there it is. Okay, we need the T X con register. Let's see, we need, where's that at? I want the definition of it, there it is. Okay, so basically bit two is your on off bit. Okay, so if we're at 16, it's one, it's one zero, and then uh, it'll be one one zero, will be what it'll be, you know, basically. So what we're gonna do is instead of trying to figure it for either one, we can just put in a, we can just and in uh, a zero, essentially. And so to do that, Right here, what we're doing is, since oh, I hate this gray, I need to change that. Um, see, we're saying and equals the FB. Well, what FB will will uh, produce, let me bring up a calculator here right fast. Uh, okay, so what that will produce, let me go to programmer. If I do an FB, it produces all ones everywhere, but a zero on bit two. See, it's bit zero, bit one, bit two, okay? And bit two is the only zero in that whole uh, eight bit value. So which means is when you and it with whatever, the ones will and, and of course they'll retain whatever is there, but the zero will zero out that, that bit two. So if that bit two is set to one, basically turning the timer on, then when we and in that zero, it will set it to off. And then we don't have to worry about turning it back on because every time we call this um, and we set it up, it turns it on. Basically up here in the prescale, that's why I'm doing a zero six. 
is the 06 will turn bit two on as well. So if I bring that back up and I do uh, hex six, see basically bit two, there's bit zero, bit one, and then bit two is set to on. So that's where we're setting it on. So we set it on while we're also scaling the timer, and then we set it off here by anding, because uh, we want to maybe retain the scale on the timer, but um, we're just anding that off. Now you could, since I'm setting the timer each time, you could probably take and just and all zeros in it, and it'll just turn everything off because we're not hurting anything. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that just to know that you can do little things like that. You can do bitwise operations to, you know, kind of manipulate um, a... Uh, register if you need to. So anyway, so that's basically it, guys. Um, you could make this more elaborate and make it s put other variables in there to where it'll switch between uh, the different pins that you want to produce the PWM on and things like that. But that's basically, in a nutshell, it. And like I said, a lot of this stuff, this is what I like uh, to do on my channel is show you guys, I mean, you can go out and buy an Arduino um, to produce like some little 8-bit musical score or something if you want to. However, you know, I mean, the, the Arduino is built for like a wide variety of functionality and they're 30 some bucks, you know, at least where I'm from. Where I'm from, they're like 30 some bucks. So, you know, it's like why spend 30 some dollars on something when you can spend, you know, five bucks essentially, because I mean, all you, all you need is a micro, um, maybe a voltage regulator, um, maybe some, some caps, maybe a, a, and then one of the piezo speakers or whatever, maybe a switch or so. So I mean, for about five to six bucks, you can make the exact same thing. You know, maybe scribe your board yourself, which if you don't know how to do that, I've got videos on that too. You can, uh, that shows you how to, uh, um, etch your own PCBs if you want to. So you know, you, you don't even have to have a professional grade PCB made if you don't want to. You can just scribe your own. Or, you know, get some perf board, that board that has holes in it and has pads. You can solder stuff to it. And yeah, like I said, for about five to six bucks, probably, you could probably make this. Um, so you don't really need the 30 some dollar uh, device, even though it is nice because it's all in one piece. Uh, the software is easy to use and all that stuff. But I mean, all this, like everything that I've done here, uh, I've done basically as free is with all the free versions, all the trial versions of everything. The high tech C compiler, it's the free version of it. Um, the MP labs X IDE that's free for microchip. You just download it. Um, all that stuff. You can do some really powerful stuff for very inexpensive. And so that's kind of another thing that I like to concentrate on with my channel. So is to show you guys how to use, um, other things that other avenues that if you want something to specifically do a certain task, you don't really need something that'll do the world. You just need, you know, a specific thing. So that's what I like to show you guys. Well, anyway, I've rambled on enough, guys. Um, I'll probably do, I'll do a demo video of this so you can see that this code actually does work. Um, and I will also post this code as well as that, uh, um, this, yeah, it, uh, Excel file here. I'll post that as well on the project code link. Um, so yeah, look for that demo video will be coming up for this. I think maybe uh, just because I've got it all set up and I've got everything wired up, we'll probably do a PWM on uh, LEDs. Might as well cover all the bases. Do sound, do LEDs, let's do it all. And so I'll show you how to dim LEDs using a PWM. As well as we got um, a propeller clock coming. I've got, uh, I got the, the parts for it. So we got a propeller clock coming. I'm gonna do it. I am gonna do it, guys. So anyway, take care, guys. Like, subscribe, share. Follow me on Twitter, Instructables. Um, Twitter, I try to update here and there as much as I can with stuff that I'm doing. Uh, kind of just getting into that habit of letting people know what's going on. But still, I like to post things when stuff's coming out. Maybe when you know when I post videos, it's posted on Twitter as well. So Twitter's going to be a good source. As well as if you need to get a hold of me and for some reason you, you don't... Uh, you can't get the YouTube to work right or you don't want to create a Google Plus account. Well, if you already have a Twitter account, you can get a hold of me there. So anyway, like, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff. Um, oh, uh, t-shirts, zazzle.com forward slash M-I Sperry. Um, there's t-shirts um, for sale. So if you want to support the channel there, you can. And I think with that, guys, that ought to do it. Take care. We'll see you next time.